Hello, this is Dr. Carla coming to you to talk about some breathing techniques or namely some power breathing techniques coming from uh, what we would use in a situation where we're looking for some strength, some power, uh, and having that mechanical advantage in that. So if you've ever had me as a coach, nurse swinging kettlebells, I usually ask you to put your tongue to the roof of your mouth and tss, 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 when you breathe out at the top. So if you're watching this, I would suggest taking your hands and putting them in your sides. Now, first, let's just try a normal breath out. You can go through the mouth or nose, it doesn't matter. If you're doing a powerful breath, you should feel some things happen in your core. Um, but if you do the same thing, tss, you're gonna notice that a lot more happens in your core. So when we get you to do that, you're creating more inter-abdominal pressure. So your diaphragm that sits underneath your rib cage, your multifidus, which is a low back muscle, uh, and then you have your transverse abdominis that wraps, that's one of the things your hands are on, and then your pelvic floor. All of that make up your inner core. So when you engage whether you're pressing that tongue to the roof of your mouth you're engaging that interabdominal pressure creating a more stable core and the lower back while you're doing this swing and it also tells me that you're putting co2 emissions out and you are not holding in that so you're creating uh, more oxygen flow so that you can sustain this movement longer so a couple of reasons why we ask you to do that breath um, another breath that usually innately happens, so I don't teach it, but I will talk about it today, is that when we get that kettlebell here, uh, we want to tss. What happens when you come down is right through here, there's usually this fast inhale through your nose. And that allows you to get that quick breath so you can stabilize that core when that kettlebell is going through as well. So some things to consider, um, when that kettlebell is coming down, that kettlebell with the G-forces coming down can actually be two and a half to three times your body weight or more. So the kettlebell can be honestly the best core exercise or it can be the worst depending upon how you approach it. So we want these things to happen so that you make it the best thing for your body and not the worst. Uh, there is... Um, Another thing to consider when we're doing this, and a lot of times as a coach, you'll hear me talk about press that kettlebell back down. Essentially, when you're swinging that kettlebell, we want your like hip and arm drive to be connected. We never want there to be this floppiness. And so when we keep our lat engaged, you keep that arm connected. Some of you, if you want to create a bigger power output, can press that kettlebell back down faster than others. But either way, you want to keep that engagement, you want to keep that connection so that there's no lofting of that kettlebell. Um, if that kettlebell tends to loft, we tend to swing it too low, which we can then jeopardize uh, our spine into forward flexion. So we want to keep that kettlebell really high in our crotch. Um, there can be a problem if you are miscuing the timing of the inhale and exhale meaning that your core isn't set at the right time of the swing. So I'm gonna demo the hike, five swings. You're gonna notice that I'm gonna breathe out at the top. And shortly after that, on that way down, I'm gonna take a deep inhale through my nose. It's like supercharging my core. So I'm gonna get set, get all things engaged. <clears throat> Some common mistakes that we see is breathing out um, and in only through the mouth and not connecting with the kettlebell. So I'll demonstrate what we don't really want to see. Okay. Another question I've been asked is what about elbow bend? So depending upon the size person you are and which height you're going to swing, I'm a very short torso, long-limbed person. So I'm gonna have a little bit of bend. It doesn't mean I need to have my arms here for the Russian swing. Uh, and when, because when that happens, I tend to lose tension. 
Now, if I have a slight elbow bend, watch, I'm gonna keep a slight elbow bend, but I'm gonna maintain tension. So as long as you're maintaining tension, then we're, that elbow bend is fine. All right, hope that helps you out with some intra-abdominal breathing and the why behind the interesting breathing technique called uh, power breathing.